Hello guys and welcome back to this new episode. Today we are going to talk about plastic surgery and its origin and its development. So let's start immediately. Plastic surgery has a very distant origin um, because plastic derives from plasticos, which is a Greek word that means to model to give shape. But the description of the first plastic surgery dates back to the Egyptian papyri and the Sanskrit text of ancient India. Already, the Edwin Smith papyrus, dated 3000 years before Christ, contains the first description of the surgery of a facial trauma with nozzle and jaw fractures. So our chapter number one could be entitled Enemies and Convicts. For the first reconstruction of noses, ears and lips, we must arrive at the Hindu texts dated around 400 before Christ. At that time, it was fashionable to cut off the nose of the enemy, and the judicial system also imposed the amputation of noses, ears and genitals. The Edwin Smith Papyrus, dated 3000 before Christ, contains the first description of the surgery of a facial trauma with nozzle and jaw fractures. It is the oldest document that testifies to the use of cosmetic surgery. It is not surprising then that a Hindu order, Sushrata, unless I've butchered its pronunciation, was the first to describe in his Samhita Encyclopedia the reconstruction of the ear with skin taken from the cheek, and the reconstruction of the nose, still called today with Indian method or Hindu. With an incision on three sides, a square flap of skin was taken from the near or from the nearest cheek and turned it upside down on the area to be reconstructed. Also, to the Hindu doctors, we owe the skin transplant taken from the buttocks, a technique that would predate the first official skin transplant described by Jacques-Louis Reverdin, who was a Swiss surgeon in 1869. And so the Hindu technique predates uh, this technique that we know and we apply by more than two millennia. Chapter number two, landing in the West. In the fourth century before Christ, Alexander the Greek, um, who was of Macedonian origin, invaded India and imported these reconstruction techniques into the Mediterranean basin. They spread so much so that in the first century, after Christ, Annus Domini, the Roman physician Aulus Cornelius Celsius, I think, or Celsus, described the repair of the mutilation of the lips, ears, and nose in his De Medicina. And in the 4th century AD, Aribasius, who was a Byzantine court physician in his Synagogue Medicae, which is an encyclopedia of 70 volumes, devoted two chapters to the reconstruction of facial defects. We also have the testimony of a coin with the effigy of Justinian II, um, which is called the nose. The Roman emperor was deposed and to prevent him from regaining the throne, his nose was amputated. He had it rebuilt and he returned to power. And practices like that were very useful in those times. It is said that in the 8th century, Justin II was called Renometheus, that is, that with the stub nose, because after being overthrown from the throne, he was also mutilated to prevent him from regaining the status of emperor. Practice that one that did not have a great result as Justinian II had his nose rebuilt, returned to power, and there are those who claim that some marble statues of him depict him with a scar on his forehead in the area where the skin was taken. Chapter number three, dark centuries with some lining. 
The fall of Rome in the 5th century and the barbarian invasions made people forget this technique. And the Middle Ages was, in this respect, a period of backwardness, with some exceptions, because in 920, in the Lich Book of Bolt, an old English text on medical practices, the first operation to correct the cleft palate is described. That is, a malformation of the palate that does not seal during pregnancy. But in the 13th century, Pope Innocent III forbade any surgery, and most of the doctors of the time began to consider the dexterity of surgical interventions dishonorable and vulgar, which became the competence of barbers. Reconstructive plastic surgery was indeed reintroduced in Europe in the 9th 12th century. The Arabs, who had invaded the Indus valleys in 711 AD and they had learned the techniques of reconstruction, had re imported them in the Mediterranean basin when they conquered Spain and Sicily. Chapter number 4 Oh my god! Turks. Cherai Ilani, the first illustrated surgery text, is a heritage of Turkish Islamic literature. Serafedin Sabunkoglu, if I have not butchered his pronunciation, described the techniques of maxillofacial surgery, eyelid pathologies, and gynecomastia. Even today, his technique to remove the glandular tissue anticipates modern reductive mammoplasty. Chapter number five, the Italian school. In Italy, on the other hand, the great families in which the professional barber surgeon was hereditary date back to that period. An example was the Branca family, who lived in Sicily in the 15th century. Their father, in 1442, reintroduced the reconstruction of the nose with an Indian technique. But just as in ancient India, the Indian caste Kumas did not disclose his technique, so did Branca father, who passed his technique to his own son. Anthony. We know this technique thanks to the description given by Alexander Benedictus, who was then a professor at the University of Padua. The branches to repair lips, noses and ears tied norm to the area to be reconstructed, then cut three sides of a square flap of skin from the arm and overturned it on the part to be rebuilt. When the repair was complete, they cut the fourth side on the flap and freed the arm. The technique, known as the Italian method, also became the patrimony of the Boyardi, who was a family of Calabrian doctors. Chapter number six. A bit of urine and we can reattach it. Leonardo Fioravanti worked at the University of Bologna who, in his uh, The Treasure of Human Life, published the account of the nasal reconstruction carried out by the Vianeso family of barbers, arousing the interest of Gasparo Tagliacozzi, who disclosed the method. Leonardo Fioravanti also made known the transplant technique. This dates back to the Hindu civilization about 2,500 years ago and was reintroduced in Europe by the Arabs. But the first description by Fioravanti dates back to 1570. A certain Spanish gentleman called Andreas Gutierrez, whose nose had been cut off in a duel and then dropped it in the sand. And hi, Fioravanti wrote, hi, had it in my hand and it was full of sand. So I urinated on it and washed it with the urine and then I reattached it by making it stay there 8-10 days. Chapter number 7. The English Surgeons. 
In the 16th century, another dark period of surgery began, which came back into vogue only in the 18th century by the British, immediately after the invasion of India. Lucas, an English surgeon returning from those shores, described the reconstruction of the nose carried out by an Indian Kumas, which he had witnessed in a letter addressed in 1794 to the Gentleman's Magazine in London. Shortly before, in 1791, Chopard had reconstructed the lip using a flap of skin turned from the neck. Among the readers of Lucas' story, was Joseph Carpew, a surgeon at York Hospital in Chelsea in England. He practiced it on corpses and in 1814 performed the first operation on a British officer who had lost his nose due to poorly done therapy uh, based on mercury. And he also performed it on another officer mutilated by a sword. Carpio published his work under the title Restoration of a Lost Nose in 1860. Chapter number 8. Modern Plastic Surgery is Born. Two years later, it was 1818, Carl von Grefe, then considered the best surgeon in Europe and father of modern plastic surgery, published Rhinoplastic. He mentioned 55 rhinoplasty operations with the Indian, Italian, and the New German method, which consisted of a real skin transplant from the arm, but also blepharoplasty, which is the eyelid plasty, and palatoplasty, so much so that he was considered the father of modern plastic surgery. But only his successor made the technique more tolerable thanks to the introduction of anesthesia and two-stage nose surgery to improve its appearance. For the complete reconstruction of the nose, the bony part was missing. The solution dates back to 1892 when Robert Weird used the duck breastbone and was the first to coin the word Renomania, that is the pathological search for surgical perfectionism of patients. But the first cosmetic surgery dates back to the late 1800s. In 1892, John Orlando Rowe, a surgeon from Rochester, New York, published a study on intranasal rhinoplasty, that is, how to redo the nose without leaving external scars. He did not eliminate the hump, but corrected the subtle nose, a deformity that afflicted the children of mothers suffering from syphilis, a venereal disease uh, then very widespread. He was also responsible for the first aesthetic rhinoplasty surgery. Chapter number nine. And that aesthetics, the important is a beauty. Vincent Zerny argued that the aesthetic purpose alone was sufficient to justify surgery. Until the end of the 19th century, plastic surgery was almost exclusively reconstructive and of little value. Then the First World War changed everything, thanks to military plastic surgery. In military plastic surgery centers, head and neck injuries were repaired and if masks covered the most disfiguring wounds before the Great War, after the war, disfigured faces were repaired by surgeons. Between 1920 and 1940, plastic surgery was also accepted by the university. The first university course in plastic surgery dates back to 1924. It's in the US and it's at John Hopkins. Chapter number 10. No more infections. Improvements in anesthesia, the use of transfusion and penicillin to control infections greatly reduced the mortality and morbidity of the procedures during the war. In some military plastic surgery centers, mortality was zero. Furthermore, 
Amputation was less used in World War II than in the previous conflicts, and a specific bone for reconstruction of the uh, of the uh, face was introduced and used. The first mammoplasty with the same tissue as the patient was performed by Zerni in 1895. He transplanted a lipoma felt deposit from a patient back to her breast to correct an asymmetry. Chapter number 11 and the breast grows. At the end of the 19th century, breast augmentation began with injections of synthetic material. In 1899, they tried with paraffin, then beeswax, then vegetable oils and other crap, so much so that starting from 1960s, this practice was prohibited due to the damages caused by it to patients. But then we got to prosthesis. The first were made of ivory or glass, but they were abandoned because the breast seemed unnatural. Then it was the turn of a sponge material, such as ivory, which could be shaped to give more natural appearance to the breast. But over time, they shrunk, hardened and distorted. And so we got to modern silicone-based implants, which began in 1963. So last chapter, number 12, tricolor liposuction. Liposuction, on the other hand, is more recent. The technique of aspirating fat with a cannula was invented by an Italian known as Alpard Fischer, whose name is everything but Italian, I don't know where he's from, and modified in 1987 by the dermatologist Jeffrey Klein with a new technique that allowed to remove a greater volume of fat but with less loss of blood. And with that being said, guys, we finish here, right now, this episode on plastic surgery. So let us know what you think, let us know if you knew any of this, and why do you think you know um, this is important to know for instance or if you ever are interested in getting some sort of um, plastic surgery and anyway um we'll talk some more next time um don't forget to like the video to comment below with your thoughts don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and we'll talk very soon bye guys